I'm not doing the whole thing. Cool story, Joel. <laughs> Especially if you're live. Yeah. <laughs> Been live for a few seconds now. Uh, let's see, we've got two people watching. We got Tigers Are Awesome and uh, Josh and Fald. Love that name, Tigers Are Awesome. Yeah, Tigers Are Awesome. <laughs> Tiger King. Tiger King. Rare. Yeah, so um, you guys. Welcome. Thanks for laughing at that. that was like, wow. <laughs> you know, tigers, they go rare when they're biting your face off with their jaws uh, meant to fit over your entire skull. Um, no, those are saber tooth tigers, though. Yeah, I know. So, but, uh, you know, a tiger's a tiger, I feel. Welcome to the Speakeasy Comedy Show. I am uh, your host, Tar Buchanan. Um, we're going into, you guys, this is the 10th month that we've been running this show, that I've been running this show. Thank you so much for coming out, and thank you everyone who's joining us on the live right now. Hi, guys. Yeah. Uh, Real, Real Joel Timms is, uh, <laughs> is joining us <laughs> live and on the live. Thanks for trying to get the count up. Buddy. It's like those Twitch streamers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, uh, yes. That's cheating. Uh, yeah, so Speakeasy. The whole point of Speakeasy, if you haven't been here before. Round of applause if you've never been here before. Whoa, crazy. Well, I'll tell you the rules. Uh, the whole reason for Speak Easy is you're free to speak easily about any topic you're feeling passionate about right now. Just try to make it funny, okay? Uh, don't just come up here and talk about uh, euthanasia, okay? Because personally, I think that all lives matter from... <laughs> 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 all nations, all ages as well, okay? Uh, that's an Asian Lives Matter joke. Um, go menasai. Please forgive me. Um, yeah, man, I'm learning Japanese right now. My roommate is Japanese, and she taught me that it's actually a really interesting... An awesome language to learn. It's uh, it's got three alphabets, um, and then it it's syllabic, so it goes a kaki ke ka kaki ke ko sa shi se sa sa so. Kind of butchering it right now, but it's it's syllabic, so it's a really sort of rhythmic language, and it's been really fun to learn so far. Um, so I've been taking it on that Duolingo, and uh, the thing about Duolingo is it's a free app where you can learn language and sometimes I think those free apps might have a little bit of a hidden agenda. Have you guys ever played uh, Words with Friends? Yeah. Okay, so one time I was playing Words with Friends and on the same board the words dirty, trash, black, and Detroit all showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, listen, words with friends, you're in timeout. Uh, that's a little bit on the nose. And, um, but the same thing started to happen with Duolingo. So uh, I was learning the word for sweet, dirty, and want the other day. And the word for sweet, uh, sweet is amai. Uh, amai, okay, I can remember that. Amai. All right, amai. The word for dirty is kitanai. I'm like, okay, amai, kitanai, I can get into it. And then the word for want is hoshii. And I'm like, bro, it's right in the word, okay, hoshii. So I'm like, okay, amai, get a kitanai, because a hoshii, okay, I like this. <laughs> I like this language, it's easy to remember, but um, I think it might have a hidden agenda once we get into prostitution. So... <laughs> You guys, it's uh, it's International Women's Month. We Ooh. did it! Yeah. We're yeah. number one. We're number <laughs> one. Um, the thing is, I, I couldn't actually compel any other women to come on this show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mostly, I think it's because I'm unlikable as a person. Um, no, it's uh, you know, I'm um, I'm entitled, bit of a know-it-all, a little bit overbearing. It's hard to like me, but. No, mostly I think it's because um, Margaret Atwood once said, uh, who's a famous Canadian author, actually, so it's, uh, it's, it's topical. She once said, man's greatest fear is uh, being laughed at by women. So what actually happened is you guys asked me not to invite any, right? <laughs> now, that would be a little bit of a strange request for a comedy show, I think. 
Um, no, it actually means that men are actually afraid of being rejected by women. That's their greatest fear. And then women's greatest fear is being murdered by men. <laughs> so, yeah, I think they were just afraid to come here. You guys were going to cough on them with your COVID cooties, right? Yeah. So, uh, no, I think, um, I don't exactly know if that's really true either, though. If, uh, you know. Oh, I see. Okay, here I lost my place. No, I think uh, women have <laughs> women have high standards, higher standards, I think. And um, I guess it begs the question, you know, Tara, how come you're not afraid to have a, a group of men in your apartment by yourself? Then aren't you afraid they're going to murder me? But the truth is, they all think there's still a chance I might hook up with them. <laughs> 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 you guys put the knives down. Um, no, you know what? I have home court advantage. I know where all the knives are hidden. Um, please don't murder me. You guys, Tinder. Um, I was recently dating a gentleman from Tinder and I had to end it. Um, I, I'm not going to say he gave me an STI. I think I was just allergic to his cat. But, um, because <laughs> like... <laughs> After we broke up, like it went away. Well, it didn't really, it didn't really go away. But uh, I think, um, no, I think sometimes you're just not a match with someone, you know. And it's it's pretty obvious. Like uh, every time we'd sit next to each other and and our arms would touch, there would just be an immediate barrier of sweat that would just occur. It's like we are not a match. We, we don't, we shouldn't be sitting next to each other. And I think sometimes it's subtle like that, like the arm skin. Sometimes it's, it's not so subtle. It's like people's breath, you know? <laughs> but we're so polite as a nation. We'd rather have someone just, uh, you know, breathe dog shit breath into our face our whole life than um, hurt their feelings and tell them we're not a match. Um, Canada. So, okay, thanks, Grancy. <laughs> I have some mask material now. It's a good segue. I, um... I think masks are pretty good for bad breath, though. They kind of cover that up. Um, masks aren't really trending anymore, though, are they? Especially not in Texas. <laughs> Man, if you wear a mask down there, people will look at you like you're wearing a diaper on the outside of your pants. They'll be like, oh my god, okay, you clearly need that, but don't come <laughs> near me <laughs> with your diaper pants. Um, yeah, it's funny, the other day I was taking a bike ride and uh, it was cold outside and I had my mask hanging on my ear. So I was like, oh, my face is getting cold. So I put it on and then a lady who's running towards me like dodges out of the way and like gives me this like, ugh, like stink face as if like there's something wrong with me. So I'm like, no, my face is just cold. I'm not worried about COVID. Mm -hmm. So it makes me think that maybe Masks aren't really trending in Calgary anymore either. So, you know, I don't really like following trends anyway. So I think, I think I'm going to just start doing masks all the time now. Yeah, now that it's not a trend. It's just like, remember when those hound's tooth scarves were really, everyone was wearing them? Like Afghan sort of hound tooth. Yeah, like eight years later, I started wearing them. It really upset my older sister. She's like, ugh. You never do the trends when they're doing. I, um, oh my god, I finally saw a guy doing a cigarette over the mask, you guys. Like, through it. I, mean, I was like, yes! Finally, this guy. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love that. I think that, uh, Coronavirus is the least of your worries, sir. <laughs> I wish they wore, I, fuck. I wish they made a mask you could wear over your entire body. Thank you, that's an old joke. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was in that, I was in that relationship. And while I was in it, I actually, I got addicted to vaping. Cause the guy was sober, right? Which I really liked. I love sober people, I think they're the best. Um, and they party too, they party fucking hard, man, <laughs> until all hours of the night. But instead of like weed and beers on the table, there's just like Red Bulls and vapes. And I'm just like, ah, 
Like, it's still not good for me, but ah, I love it. So I got addicted to vaping. Um, and I knew I was addicted because it made me incredibly selfish and it also turned me into a liar. So it made me selfish because I couldn't stop thinking about the next time that I could vape. I'm like, oh, it's coming, it's coming so soon. I can go outside for a bike ride. But then it turned me into a liar because I'd see like a family walk past and I'm like, no, I can't. I was ashamed. You know, I was ashamed of vaping. So I had to quit that. So instead of, I just got a hookah set up for today. You know? <laughs> That's so much better. It's more special or this way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my birthday was this month. I turned 32. Thank you. Yeah, birthday month. It really has been a month of celebrating my birthday. I don't really have any content on that other than I just wanted you guys to know that. <laughs> I'm a little bit older now. Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know, I kind of want to talk about this. I, I just want to put this out there, but uh, trigger warning, everyone. Trigger warning. There's still some people watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm 32 now, and... This will happen about once a week. I don't know if you guys can relate to this because you're men, but um, I don't know if you'll relate to it in the same way. But about once a week, I'll just have an old rundown Saturn just kind of slow down next to me at 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, it's not always the same Saturn. It's just usually a shitty car um, that was built between 95 and 2005. And it'll just slow down and it'll look at me and I'll look at them and I'll be like, no. <laughs> and then they'll speed <laughs> up and drive away. And it makes me think, like, do I look like a prostitute? Like, I know, like, I don't know. I think I'm cute, but I look like I've been through some shit. You know, like, I'm, I'm pretty, but I got some miles on me. You know? Like, I'm, I'm young, but I, I've, I've got an old soul. Okay, moving on. Actually, there, um, there was a, a sexual assault allegation, something that's been going on. Sexual assault is just trending right now in Calgary, and I don't really like following the trends, you guys, as I mentioned earlier, but I'm gonna mention this now. Um, yeah, it actually, it all came out um, that there is an actual, there wasn't actually a, a sexual assault. There was like a group of people and another group of people, and they got into an altercation. It was, um, it was St. Patrick's night. You know, that's gonna happen when folks are drinking. Uh, but I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to see that. I read the police report and everything on, on the news, you know, the real news. So I, 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 I like to think that I fact-checked. Um, something that did actually happen that exact same night, though, is um, I came home from groceries around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, as you do. And uh, I was all encumbered. I had my groceries in my arms. I had my long board. And I was walking down not a very well lit street and there was a white pickup truck facing me and it flicked its lights at me. And I wasn't really feeling very patient because I had all my groceries on me. So I just ignored. So the car comes and does a U-turn and drives next to me and they're cruising me. You know, they're looking over, no, no. So I flip them the bird. So they zoom away, and then they try to turn north on a southbound one-way street. They felt all types of ways. They didn't like that I did that. So I'm like, well, I'll see them again. So I keep walking up my street, and I get to about a block away from my building, and the same pickup truck rolls next to me, doesn't look at me this time, but parks on the other side of the street, and I'm right by my house at this point. So I'm like, oh, this is an ordeal now. I've got to do something. I didn't know if I should do something. I approached the vehicle. Now, in, hi in hindsight, I know I should never have done that, okay? You should never approach a vehicle. But the light was green. The little walk sign was on. I'm like, that's the universe telling me I got to go, you know? So I walk up. And I, I, uh, the guy opens the door and he, he gets out. He's like, hey, what's up? And I'm just like, well, I know you were cruising me back there. And I just want you to know, I think you should get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
and he got very nervous and kind of fumbly and he's like what do you mean i i wasn't uh, uh and i'm just like yeah like you know this is my neighborhood i don't want to feel unsafe in my neighborhood i don't think that's fair so i think you should do a round of the block or take a drive but i don't want to see you around here and he says yeah well i'm not going to do that because you're wrong about me and i'm like sure i am so he gets his uh headphones and what looks like a gym bag because he's working out at nine o'clock at night in my area. There's no gym in my area, <laughs> okay? Um, and then he sort of walks off in a general direction. So what do I do now? I feel kind of like shitty. I feel kind of, you know, I was a little bit scared. So I called the police, because that's what you do. So I called the cops. They took his license plate number. They walked me to my door. They even helped me carry my groceries. I was not encumbered as much any longer. So it ends up being a really nice night. And um, I just want to thank the Calgary police on this Instagram Live for being, yeah, for being there for me. That was really cool. I also want to bring up, like, if this was a situation that you ever find yourself in, um, don't approach the vehicle. Just go into your apartment. Trust the security of your building and that everything is actually going to be okay. Don't do what I did. But if you do get into an altercation where you yeah. think you might have to engage, whatever happened to the dick punch? <laughs> okay? Ladies. Men may be stronger than us, but their dick is on the outside <laughs> of their bodies. So just grab it. And it hurts them a lot. Does it hurt you guys? Yeah. Can yeah. we get on board with yeah. like when somebody <laughs> grabs your dick forcefully, it immobilizes you. I think like back in the 90s, it wasn't trendy to hit people in the dicks anymore. I remember learning like, don't hit your brother in the dick. Never do it. Always do it. <laughs> And on that note, I'm going to bring up your very first comedian, you guys. <laughs> um, he's been on the show many times before. Uh, love having him back, and thank you so much for supporting live comedy. That's why we're here, Mr. Ryan Butterfield. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, happy International Women's Month. Uh, we're celebrating by uh, inviting all white males to the show. So, <laughs> good on you, Tara. <laughs> uh, well, um, I, I don't know if this is racist or not. Um, so when you, someone starts a conversation, when it starts out like that, it probably is. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, there's a there's an Asian market near where I live. This guy, he's a very nice old man. He runs the 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 market there i buy like tr like you know candy bars and chips and everything from there <laughs> yeah, that was uh, somebody getting high in the back <laughs> it's not weed <laughs> and uh he's a very nice guy he's a korean guy i buy like my chips and junk food from his store i, don't, I like him a lot he he speaks broken english though and like i try to like He's a but he's just a nice guy, and I, is this racist? Like, sometimes when he talks, like, I bow a little bit, like, because <laughs> I thought it was, like, out of respect, so, but I didn't mean to do it, I just, like, it was, like, instinctive, like, <laughs> I don't know, um, Pepe Le Pew got canceled, wasn't the whole point of his character is, like, he couldn't get any skunk pussy, like, what, that was the whole point, like, he always just be all creepy, and like it just like everybody's just in the the cat that was like she always the cat that he was hitting on always like end up being a skunk somehow like get a stripe down her back of white and like he was just creepy like nobody wanted to hook up with him like that was the whole point why are we canceling him he already canceled himself with his behavior you know what I mean and like should we even cancel him like the cat like I said like it was a cat but like she would always end up in a predicament where she was ended up as skunk like it was a transgender skunk. <laughs> Pepe Le Pew is prog a progressive hero. <laughs> he was the first cartoon to like hook up with like transgender skunks, and I feel like no one's addressing that. <laughs> You're right. Uh, my grandpa, you know, he passed away recently. It's it's very sad, but we kind of all knew it was happening, and uh, I went to the funeral. It was a, it was an okay funeral. My dad's a preacher, so he did the. 
he did uh, the funeral and then he called like my extended family a bunch of heathens which i found really funny <laughs> <laughs> and then uh i don't know they uh they like they uh what's it called cremated him and then it i didn't know he did this but you can put them like in a little the ashes like in a little box area that's kind of like its own little uh graveyard and then for some reason i'm just like so do we just leave him here or do like do people get to take take home samples <laughs> 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 Nobody thought that was funny. I'm glad everybody <laughs> is laughing here. Uh, you know, he was going through a lot. Like, he had, like, two types of cancer before he got, like, a stroke and passed away. And then he got test, test, uh, testicle cancer. Test, test, I can't pronounce it. He, one of his balls got chopped off. And, <laughs> you know, our family, like, you know, we just have dark sense of humor. Like, he's in the choir. So then when, like, when that happened and you got his ball chopped off, they were just like, so are they going to move you up to Soprano? Or, uh, <laughs> that was my dad who said that. You know? <laughs> and then right before he passed, he told one of my uncles, like, he's just like, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. It's just like, I'm going to beat this. And then uh, I'm going to find that doctor that chopped my nut off and tell him to fuck off. <laughs> Well, here's for you, Grant. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching out there. Um, yeah, I follow him, so. Yeah. <laughs> I did my taxes for the first time. Woo! Uh, surprise, still poor. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I just, I thought I would do it, and then it's just like, oh, we ran the numbers. Turns out you're secretly a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> didn't work out that way. <laughs> didn't work out that way. I'm trying to buy a house now. I'm trying to buy a house. It's like... It's... it's my. Uh, I talked to a mortgage broker, and she told me that I should get, like, a credit card to, like, and use it, and then, like, I can pay it, to pay for stuff, and then I pay it off and to build up my credit so that I can afford a house. So she essentially told me, I have to spend money I don't have and then pay it back to buy uh, something I need that I can't pay back for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Home ownership is really a Ponzi scheme. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Gotta play the game, baby. Yeah. Um, and, uh... Gotta spend money to make money around by the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's me crazy. <laughs> uh, I found out I was lactose intolerant. Um, oh, yeah, it sucks. Uh, I found out I was lactose intolerant recently, and then I, I, I always figured it was because like I would eat like the entire bucket of ice cream by myself, and that's why I was sick. But no, it turns out even if I just eat a normal amount, then I will get sick. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's it's true. <laughs> Uh, uh, people who uh, like say they're like animal people, like really what you're saying is like, I can't deal with humans and humans are human and animals are not. So I'm going to put all my human emotions into this thing that can't betray me. Uh, that's just sad. Uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> Cats, man. Yeah. All right. We all have that family member who's like, you know, he's kind of like a scumbag, but like he's also very loyal. Uh, that's my, for me, for me, that's my cousin. Um, he's tried to stab me on one occasion. <laughs> <laughs> and he's bitten my dog. My dog, <laughs> my dog didn't bite him. He just bit him. Like he bit him on the ear. Oh and like, that was like so wild and random. Like when it happened, like I just, I didn't believe what I just saw. Like, it had, he bit down on his ear, and then I'm just like, wait, did you just bite my dog? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I could count on him to, like, you know, bury a body if I needed to, because he's just so loyal. And then, but, you know, he's just kind of a, he's, he's a ma ma maniac of a dude. Like, he got married to this girl in Greece, so he's stuck in Greece right now. And <laughs> he met her, like, playing video games. And then went over to Greece and married her. And now he's just not speaking Greek because he didn't learn the language before he went there. <laughs> and he just and then uh, yeah, so I don't I don't know what his deal is, but 
I love you, James. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, James. Um, I think my dog might be having an identity crisis because like, you know, he's a, we got him, I got him from like the reserve and then I gave him a Spanish name and then he got like adopted by a white family. So, you know, he's just sits in the yard just like, what am I? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of amazing you could talk. I mean, you're a dog, so. You got that going for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's a talking dog. You know, uh, speaking of Women's Month, uh, Women's Month, do you ever, like, just, like, get weird horniness about uh, certain, like, I saw a girl on a bike once, and I was just, like, something about a bike. <laughs> no? Okay. <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> I don't know. When guys are cruising me in the sand. Right, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. That was me in that truck. Um, right. <laughs> you have my number. <laughs> um, I got a haircut. Yeah. I, I call it the, the far right J. Crew. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's why I'm dressed like, a, like an out of work. You know, proud boy right now. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, what else? Nothing is worse than like going through puberty and going to church while going to church. Because like you're just, because like you're just, you're like, you want to have sex with everything and you're like in the one place where they're just like, can't do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know, it was just, it was very awkward doing, growing through that. There's a joke there, I didn't really, I wrote that down today, and I thought I could just get up here and it would work. That's, uh, some advice for you guys out there, plan your stuff out. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, it inspired me, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> um, Dr. Seuss got cancelled. Um, <laughs> Everyone? Everybody's getting cancelled. I wrote a, like a, I think I wrote a, a, a right-wing uh, Dr. Seuss. Uh, is it, there once was a who named Macri who lived and worked in a factory. He knew what he knew, and although he was wired, and then one day he ended up fired. Heroin and method was on, and soon he joined QAnon. <laughs> <laughs> and his mind began to unravel. His mind began to unravel, and soon he started to storm the Capitol. If you know where this who is, please inform the local authorities and then they will pass that information on to the FBI. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have one more I want to talk about. Not really. Oh, okay. I kind of... I'm a bro, uh, but you know I'm a I'm a self-hating bro, if that makes any sense. Like, like I do all the broy things, watch you know work out, drink creatine, all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But like, I hate bro questions. Like sometimes bros like ask me, "Yo, bro, how much do you weigh?" Or no, no, how much? I'd be very. I, I get like, I get very insulted when people ask me, <laughs> <laughs> "How much can you bench press?" And I'm like. And I get I hate that question so much. Like I just get passive aggressive with it. She's like, "Oh, how much you bench press, bro?" I'm like, "Probably more than you." Uh, <laughs> and then I hate other bro questions like, "You know, are you tits or ass, man?" And I'm just like, I get even more passive aggressive with that question. I'm just like, you know, both. I'm not like you. I don't limit myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's end it there. You guys have been a great audience. Woo! Thank you so much. Right about field. Good job, man. Oh, yeah. Ryan Butterfield, thank you so much for being on the show. This is your third consecutive month being here, so. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's not afraid of rejection, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't murder me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Mr. Potato Head, skunk pussy. Listen, um, <laughs> did Mr. Potato Head get canceled because he was a mister? Yeah. Yeah. 
Not because they're making fun of Irish people? <laughs> no. Okay. Irish lives... <laughs> Irish lives matter, you guys. Um, it's funny you were talking about church and how you're horny in church. Listen, I went to Catholic, <laughs> I went to Catholic school growing up, and we'd have mass once a month, and everyone had to sit on the gym floor cross-legged, and it was really started to get really uncomfortable, especially as like you're grade seven, grade eight, you're you're already. <laughs> I was already uh, going into menopause, so um, <laughs> you know I've got some miles on me. But uh, no, it's funny because. Those were probably my most homoerotic moments, was at mass in the gymnasium. <laughs> Everyone's lined up single files, sitting down with their legs splayed open. I'd always have like a girlfriend laying in my lap and I'd be like giving her back tickles or whatever. <laughs> She's like, oh my God. And I'm like, ooh, Sarah Lyon. What? <laughs> Sarah, is she watching? Probably she'll like that one. No, but to, yeah, like you're giving your, your girlfriend in front of you a fucking backgasm while, you know, they're telling you about... In a nomina padre, spiritu santo. It wasn't actually in Spanish. It was, or <laughs> Italian? Latin. Latin. <laughs> Latin. <laughs> it was in Japanese. So. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, good times. Good times in church. Um, anyways, we're just going to roll right along, you guys. The Speakeasy Comedy Show. We're just flying by the seat of our pants. We're going to welcome, uh, it's his very first time on the show, and his name is Mr. Billy McDonald. Round of applause. More applause than that. Sorry, let me get out of here. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? You know, uh, I actually was gonna wear a Women's Day T-shirt here tonight, I totally but uh, I didn't want to seem like I was overcompensating for anything. <laughs> Tara's been talking about how uh, she doesn't think that any women have been attacked around here, but. I have on, like, some good authority that there have been some women being attacked around here. <laughs> Not to incriminate myself. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, it's supposed to be springtime, right? It's not really feeling like it, but I'm hoping they're, we're gonna have some hot dog weather soon. Mm. You know? Like, right now, uh, dog will probably just freeze or starve to death if you leave it in your car before it gets hot enough to cook it, but... Good times are around the bend. Uh, I actually love dogs. A real dog person. Uh, I thought most people were. But I did some Googling the other day, and it turns out that uh, feet are the most popular fetish. Uh, I guess I know what side of that uh, Ryan is on. Uh, huh? You know, you know, dog and people, you know. No. Anyway, <laughs> you know that one night. No, what? <laughs> my dog guy. I have a dog. Uh, my dog's supposed to have turned sixteen next month. Aww. Yeah, uh, I don't think he's gonna make it. <laughs> uh, he's like a son to me. I've had him since I was eighteen years old. But I met this woman on Tinder the other night, and she said she hates dogs. So, I think he's gonna die pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, don't do it. Uh, I don't know. I think we're being pretty safe here. Like, we've all been vaccinated, obviously. Is it, is it too early to start lying about being vaccinated? <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I need to wait like another month before I start telling people that I've got it. I don't know. Yeah, it's too soon. You're too healthy. All right. Well, speaking of getting in trouble, are there any, like, uh undercover cops around here. Okay, good. Good to know. Any pedophiles? It's okay there are no cops. You know, you can tell. No. All right, well, I think undercover cops and pedophiles actually have, like, a lot in common, but uh, the main thing has got to be, like, the misconception people have that an uh, undercover cop, like, has to tell you if he's an undercover cop. Like, what? Have you ever had a pedophile come to your door, knock on the door and say, hey, excuse me, I'm a registered sex offender that just moved in? No, none of us have ever experienced that, I don't think. But we all think that that's something that they might have to do. Uh, you know, they go down to that like registry office, like, you know, we go down on a Saturday morning to pay a parking ticket or whatever, you got 
like 10 dudes uh, waiting in line for, to pay their indecent exposure tickets. <laughs> they get there, we take a number, for some reason they're all just like from 5 to 15. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they finally get to the front of the line and they still have to do that little eye test where like you're trying to look at the dots, you know, and pick a number. Uh, like maybe it's a 12. I think that's a, that's a, I see an eight. They're doing the same thing, but they're just showing them pictures of kids. Uh, and these guys have to guess their age. Oh, I don't know. Uh, they usually get confused and just rate them all tens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I could be a pedophile. I personally hate, <laughs> I hate looking at pictures of people's kids. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, probably the thing holding me back. I don't know. But speaking of anything. speaking of sex with like inappropriately aged, you know, people uh, had a pretty big sexual milestone recently. Oldest woman I've ever had sex with. Woo. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, she was my mom's best friend. I mean, she was. Uh, the funeral was last Saturday, and they left her body unattended for so long, I probably could have done it a couple of times. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, what else is new? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I, uh, I got added to a family group chat the other day, oh. and it actually feels really nice to be included in stuff like that. Like, I haven't always been the best son, you know? Uh, but I feel like this is really good for me. Um, you know, they've been really supportive, like financially and stuff. Uh, getting in on all that family drama feels cool. I haven't uh, had the heart yet to tell these people that I stole their daughter's cell phone, but I'm really curious to find out if the grandma's gonna die. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I actually have a girlfriend, uh, but the other day I found out that she loves another man. Oh no. Yeah, no, it's uh, actually, it's worse than you guys think. Like, I'm not a jealous guy, but his name is Jesus. Oh. Yeah. I thought she was smart, but uh, turns out she's a practicing Catholic. Mm. You know, it wouldn't have bothered me if maybe she was just a little spiritual or something, but uh, this is like the big practicing Catholic. I was raised Catholic, uh, but I'm a little over it. And it's not like the big things like, you know, all the child molestation and ingrained misogyny into Catholicism. That's my problem. It's more like the little things. Like I was an altar boy for four years. I'm cool with that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's the little things. The other morning I made her breakfast in bed. I made pancakes from scratch. And I brought them up to her and started just like wafting the smell of these pancakes into her face. And she opened her eyes and then right away, bless us, O oh Lord, for these are gifts. I said, what are you doing? I'm, I'm giving thanks. I'm thanking God. I'm the one who made that for you. Are you kidding me? Maybe I'm just a little jealous. I don't know. Maybe she thought I was holding up like one of those big communion wafers or something. Maybe. Pancake, you know, could look like that. Both disc shaped. Yeah. Uh, she says she wants some more uh, equality in our relationship though. Which I'm, I can get on board for, you know, Women's Month. But. Uh, just this month. Just this month. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I was uh, performing analingus on her the other night, you know, as uh, one does. Okay. And I really don't want her to be returning that favor to me. Like, yeah, teach their own, but like, no thank you. And I had to find a way to level the playing field after that, you know? So I used her toothbrush. Because it's her poop in my mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha. So then her toothbrush. I got the hell's your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Beth, are you? Is she watching? I don't know, but. Uh... I love you, Beth. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Thank <laughs> you, Tara. Yeah, you're welcome, man. All right. Fuck yeah, Billy McDonald, everybody. <laughs> First timer on the show. Speak easy. Oh, man.
Analingus. <laughs> Isn't that just a fun word to say? Ah, oh, yes. What would you like, madam? I'd like the analingus, please. Um, I might go back to Catholic. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a good story. They're changing so many things these days. I think they might just change the Bible altogether. We were talking about this the other day. <laughs> How uh, I don't actually think that uh, there was an immaculate conception. And I, I think that, you know, Moses was actually Mary's boyfriend. And that him, you know, parting the Red Seas, that was him just, like, breaking her hymen. <laughs> like, that's the first time that they... Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time that they, like, had sex. And that, um, yeah, and then the burning bush was actually when he was like, Oh, you gave me crabs. <laughs> so she was a whore. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, so we're still writing that, though. We're still rewriting it? Still rewriting it? Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. So, you know what? We're just going to keep moving the show right along, my friends. Um, having such a good time. So grateful, everyone who uh, who's joined the live. Mr. Don Philipchuk, thanks for being there, buddy. Spencer Stryker, what's up? AJ, can't believe it's not Butters. <laughs> I love that you guys are uh, live and on the live. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring our um, our headliner up. He's high paid, high priced. He's wearing a vest and gaiters. His name is Mr. <laughs> Mr. Joel Timms. Round of applause. Oh, man. Um, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but uh, did, did you, like, do you not know, like, Biblical timelines? <laughs> <laughs> Mary and Moses were like thousands of years. <laughs> like thousands of years. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and you're there was you're like, why didn't that joke work? I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe give it, you know, br try and bring it together like a couple of thousand of years. Maybe you know. just need to believe in magic. <laughs> Uh, guys, I just want to start my setup by saying hashtag stop Asian hate, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> except for those Indian farmers. <laughs> Screw those guys. Right? What do they say? No farmers, no food? <laughs> yeah, I saw that on Instagram. Was, I, saw, I saw that on a bumper sticker. Oh. So, you know. Yeah. Hopefully nobody... Hopefully I don't get canceled like Brett Forte. Mm. All right, guys, yeah, cool. Um, Brett Forte. Yeah, shout out to Tara for running this show and getting Billy off the street for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Women of Calgary, if you're watching this, we'll tell you when he leaves. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, uh, that you're talking about like Pepe Le Pew and getting canceled, like. How are they canceling cartoon animals? Like, have they never watched like, Animal Planet? Like, how much of Animal Planet is consensual? <laughs> like, when you, even if you, like, have, like, a pet dog and you're breeding your dog with somebody else's dog. <laughs> did, did your dog sign off on that? Like, you put them in a room together, you're like, get to it. Like, you, <laughs> there's no, no, no consent. And... I, th I should have stopped 30 seconds ago with that what one. If, cool. What if it's like Chihuahua Bulldog too? That's, Chihuahua Bulldog, yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy. She's <laughs> trying to feed you a premise and yeah, now you go somewhere with I it. I, I don't have anywhere to go with that. I, on your own I, I told you, I don't have any material. <laughs> I, yeah, no shit, no. this is like, uh, it's like the whole, like, my entire stand-up career over the last year. I just don't have any material, and it's cool. I wish that I could, you know, get my friends to vote me through on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dale. Um, Do work. Yeah, so the entrance to this building is kind of funny, because, like, you need, like, a, a fog or something to get in, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about, like, a... Like a, yeah, like a recently arrived <laughs> My wife still has an accent, okay? Uh, but you need like a fob to get in, but when, then there's like a thing to like dial a number. So like, how are you supposed to get in and like dial the number of somebody that lives here? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't that be on the outside? 
That's just, that's just <laughs> a question that I had. I wonder this every day. Yeah, holy crap. Um, so, I, uh, in 2016, I started working out, and uh, I, I, my Instagram actually used to be dedicated to fitness because I started working out and I was uh, Joel T Fitness for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, uh, I stopped dieting, so I had to change it to real Joel Tims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit me up if you want some workout plans. But uh, yeah, a, a couple weeks ago I posted something on Facebook about my, my home gym and Tara was like, hey, that's cool that you started working out, but uh, it's been years. <laughs> the fact that I have been working out for years and nobody noticed is really, really cool. But um, yeah, speaking of pedophiles, my wife's... <laughs> I I asked my wife if she could describe me in one word, and she said uh, a kid. So that I, I don't know how I feel about that. She is a little bit older than me, but um, I don't know. That I I thought about that when I was in the bathroom, and that's going nowhere. Cool guys. Uh, you know, I I really don't like taking public transit. I don't know about you guys. But um, the only thing that I like about it is that you get such a wide variety of people. Like you get on the train and there's like an emo girl on there. You get some like mental health issues. You get some sex workers. Like there's a wide variety of it. But I, I really don't like having to pay that like $4 or whatever it is to get on the train now. Uh, but I did discover a solution. It's called TikTok Live. You get the same conglomerate of people on there. <laughs> you got the emo girls, you got mental health issues, you get the sex workers with their OnlyFans, it's great. So, uh, yeah, I'll be going live on TikTok later tonight. <laughs> Dale Ward! <laughs> Dale Ward. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's patio season. Patio season's coming up. You know, are you guys excited for patio season? Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah. Uh, patio I, I used to, you know, it used to be known as summer when I was growing up. <laughs> but uh, I guess people call it patio season. You guys, do you actually like it? Yeah, yeah. I, I could get into it. I, you disgust me. <laughs> I hate, I hate patios. I hate the people that want to go in the patio. They're like, ship an anchor, man. Let's go on 17th so we can smell the diesel and we can smell the homeless piss. From the <laughs> like, screw you people. And your patio season, sitting on the patio, like it's the most overrated thing ever. You want to get stung by wasps? <laughs> like, get... <laughs> Eat inside. It's air conditioned. It's nice. Well, but uh, these are the same people that Friday is their favorite day of the week. They call it Friday. <laughs> hey, it's Friday. Turn up. Like, sh <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Go inside. <laughs> eat your dinner like a human. All right, you're an adult. <laughs> are you filming this? <laughs> <laughs> She's drinking tea. <laughs> I thought that was a phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she's just shaking her head now. Hey, come on. What kind of tea is that? You just leave my roommate. What kind of tea is that? Is it patio tea? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, man, I thought of this joke and it's not even good. Like the rest of my jokes tonight. <laughs> Uh, that patio well, material is tough. That patio material. They come from the heart right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> passionate about the patio. But, like, you guys are aware of, like, Amber Alerts, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, with COVID, I don't think there's been as many Amber Alerts. Because, you know, people just can't, like, up and leave. They can't kidnap kids. Mm. Wayfair's kind of got that under control <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, um... I think that they should keep Amber Alerts, but they should just change the meaning of it. It should be like whenever a woman named Amber is within 50 feet of you. <laughs> because all women named Amber are crazy. <laughs> think about it. Amber Heard, she beat up Johnny Depp, right? <laughs> she's, she's crazy. There's <laughs> Amber Rose. I don't even know what she, like she was like a stripper and then like she was engaged to Kanye West and she's like got like four baby daddies or something. I don't, she's bald. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Crazy. <laughs> Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> Fitch. Uh, yeah, but uh, like when I when I wrote this joke. I tried to look up famous Ambers, and I could just find the two that I named and a bunch of porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> it does put in my point. So, sign my petition. It's going up on change.org. Um, Joel Timms. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to try and remember this joke. Like, I'm going to have to start. Like, are you guys going to like do material that you did before, or are you just starting fresh? Like, when you're able to go on, like... Oh. Yeah, I bet it's keep using my stuff that I already did. I yeah. I, I'm trying to write new shit. I, I haven't been writing new stuff, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> How many? There's three people in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you came in to see this. <laughs> but, um... Two of them are us. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm going to have to, like, try and remember, like, my, my material that I was telling before. I probably should write new stuff, because none of my jokes are very good, but... Yeah, I have uh, three, no, sorry, we have four kids, four kids. The, the reason I forgot about the fourth is because we got a deliver from Wayfair yesterday. <laughs> now we have a fourth child. Yeah, his name's Ryan. Mm. I'm not sure how old he is. Yeah, I, <laughs> my wife absolutely hates that joke. Um, not because of the sensitive nature of child trafficking, she just doesn't want people to know that she still shops at Wayfair. <laughs> but yeah, we actually had to return Ryan because uh, there was a scratch in the desk. <laughs> and uh... Also, his name is Ryan. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had a different name for it before when I used to tell that joke, but I forgot <laughs> what the name was, so that's cool. But um, I've always thought of Wayfair as like upscale wish. And, you know, like, what if Wish got into the child trafficking game? Like, how is that experience, right? You know, you, like, you order a couple 10-year-olds. They don't come for, like, six months. By the time you open the box, they're dead. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. And they get, it's just, like, old women that died of COVID or something. I don't know. Okay, people don't want to hear about that. Cool. Um, yeah, I, uh, that was Patio's. I don't, I'm, I'm done. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Um, it's snowing outside. The snow has kind of stuck to the sidewalks. So I'm going to have to work tomorrow. And, um, oh, uh, sorry. I, let, me, let me close with this really good joke. My daughter told me that I needed to tell it on stage tonight. She said, this is real comedy. She's four. Uh, she said, uh, why did the cow cross the road? Why? So he could eat his own poop. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been Joel Timms. Thank you very much. Joel Timms! All right. Thank you so much, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. That's the real Joel Timms right there. <laughs> In the flesh. He's been working out, though. He looks jacked. <laughs> yeah, good job, man. Um... Yeah, so um, that's the that's the show, my friends. <laughs> we had seven comedians booked, but they all had to drop out last minute due to unforeseen circumstances, and um, uh, mostly because I don't think they wanted to be here. But um, no more dead grandma jokes. <laughs> that's what Don is saying. Yeah, I'm just happy my grandmother wasn't around for COVID, you know just to see all this madness, but uh, she actually died from bowel cancer, so she suffered a lot. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, Don. I had to. Don't t- can't tell me my business in my own house. Mm. All right. So, oh, no, he says. Mm. All right, so let's see. Everyone that joined the live today, there's still six people watching. We had Haitian-based. What's up? Thank you so much for joining. We had um, Elite Extension House. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up with an extension cord. Spencer, AJ, Ryan, even though he's here, Adam Fasoli, uh, Ryan Hampton, uh, Mama Trees, Boom Dog, Shakers Comedy, Red Eye. He was one of those guys who did his first five minutes two months ago. Way to go, buddy. My girlfriend, Sarah Lyon, who I give back tickles to at Mass. <laughs> it was homoerotic. We're both fine with it now. We've talked about it. Have we? We're talking about it now, Sarah. All right, Grace Vanderveen, my old uh, um, 
my my old she's not old she's young i have i'm not gonna tell jokes about her she is uh she was my old yoga instructor uh we had cool warren carol astro peter who i used to work with crystal my brother's wife mr grandpa joined no more grandpa jokes okay a crisp a crisp new bill he's here hodan <laughs> my brother adam talvi my cousin african boy claude hopper uh that's claudia oh my god so i i actually went on a um <laughs> i went on a hike with adam and claudia over the weekend and we hid a time capsule using um what three words what three words in the house they freaking dm'd me they're like thanks for hashtagging us i'm like oh my god <laughs> um so we used what three words to hide our time capsules so the 10 years down the road when there's lizard people and squid people we can dig it up and Look at the garbage that we littered underneath that rock. Um, Adam Tycho, life ain't heck. Wish you were here, Mace. Amol, Mason, Mason, uh, <laughs> Mason. Okay, it's it's a tender thing. Adam Tycho, I Josh, Victoria, Real Joel Tims, Metal Melrose, the only smalls. You know what, you guys? Thank you so much for joining the um, the live tonight. Uh, we're just gonna keep. We're just gonna keep working as hard as we can and flying by the seat of our pants and keep doing uh, live comedy because that's what's important during these times. If you wanna donate to the GoFundMe, just uh, the link is in the description on my YouTube page and on my Instagram so that I can pay these lovely gentlemen who decided to perform tonight for their talents. Thank you again for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time. Woo. Peace out. Send this puppy. <laughs> and you're canceled.